Good morning everyone, Steve Brown from uh, Swansea Creators and I'm here this morning with Heather from HCHR and we're just talking about the you know the different support strategies that uh, human resource companies and consultants can give to small businesses like ourselves and one of the things we're just talking about was staff retention because you know I've had various different businesses and especially when you're in things like you know the coffee shop uh, business you just get high turnover staff so why we have why is a business having a problem with staff retention what, what causes the problems with staff retention many many reasons um, and it's how do you find out what's causing the the start the uh, the staff to the level of turnover okay. uh, and one of the best ways is to actually ask the people that are going right um, now they may not necessarily tell you so you might want to get somebody else to, to do that to ask give them a, que a, a, a confidential questionnaire right. but it's a very a lot of people forget to do this uh, but it's a very powerful tool because you'll find you may think you know why they're going but it may not be that may not yes. be the reason I've always assumed it was like in that sort of business it's because there are minimum wage and they've just been offered something better or whatever but it, 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 it might be might be the case um, uh, and, and, and unless you ask you, you don't necessarily know that's but, right um, and we never did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. just assumed yeah yeah, yeah. so what you, so what, so are you saying then and they um, they mightn't like me you know because I've been the bossy boss maybe they wouldn't actually be honest with me anyway so you're saying get a third party to ask the question or get them to fill in a simple questionnaire yeah, yeah cause you, you want to, you want to know the real the real reason right um, and they may feel some people may feel, may, may, might feel guilty you might be even you know it causes it's, it's very costly when somebody leaves yes, um, so it's quite possibly might be difficult for you to hide your frustration at the cost of cost yeah. of the of, of replacing the person so yes the um, somebody impartially can sit down and really find out why why they why, why they're leaving now of course you can anticipate some of this you're talking about um, minimum wage yes. so you could actually anticipate a high level of turnover and you could set your business out knowing that that's going to happen yes. lots of organizations will do that um, as long as you, if you can, if you can plan it, you can yeah. you can manage it, yeah. and you can uh, look at the look at the costs. It's where it's unplanned, and then it, the costs really hit you. The costs right. of recruitment is not just placing the advertisement; it's the amount of time. It's the right. it's the downturn in in in, in their productivity. Yeah. You've also got the you, you have people on uh, on notice, yeah. but more than often, it's it's probably better for the person to leave rather than work their notice. Right. Not always not always the case. Uh, those are sort of strategic uh, issues or. Yeah or individual issues that you need to so, so are you saying then so you know I'm, I'm just going to keep using the, the retail yeah. trade as, as an example because we all know it's a high turnover in there so are you saying then because like I know when I was running businesses like that like you just said th the biggest problems was one you had to do more interviewing two you you had to do training with them so you had two members of staff mm -hmm. doing one job mm -hmm. effectively uh, then the person that was leaving, they, we couldn't leave them working their notice because they're dealing with cash. Yep. And so you, you, you just had to say, and the negative impact with customers. So you, you, all those are hidden costs that you're not actually um, mm. counting at the time. So are you saying that possibly a, a better strategy would be to allow for the fact that you are going to have that? So maybe if money was the pure issue, mm. um, you could have built that cost in and actually given them a, a, some more money per hour or a bonus of some kind or something. And so. You, so that would be one way. What other ways um, could we retain staff? What what other reasons the staff leave? Well, there's, there's personal circumstances. Uh, the other way of knowing whether what, yeah. what, why staff might leave is actually understanding why they've come to you in the first place, which right. brings you on to recruitment. Recruitment and retention are go go hand in right. go hand in hand. It's essential that when you're recruiting, that you recruit the right people. There's no point recruiting somebody on on minimum wage when they previous to this they've been earning considerably more than that. Right. You know that they're going to be looking for some, yeah. something but, else. But, but I'm going to stop you there now because when you say recruitment, uh, to me that's a minefield right. because in all the years I've been in business, they come up keep coming up with these wonderful different tests and different ways you can measure people mm. before you take them on. And they still have the same problems. You, you still get people leave, and you still get people who joined you that you had you done a better job of recruitment, you wouldn't have recruited them, etc. Mm -hmm. So, is there any sort of um, I don't know set formulas, set patterns that you do when you when you're actually going through that recruitment process? Mm -hmm. Are there things that you should be measuring, or certainly asking the right questions? How do you get, where do you get that from? Well, it's. It's sort of. I think it's a bit like a like a like a marriage. Both right. parties have got to come and to get something from from the the, the relationship. Right. So when you're recruiting, it's organisations and the individuals sometimes lose sight. The individual just wants the job, want the job, want the job. Yeah. Uh, you just want the best person. So you look through the CVs, you get the, mo the most qualified, most qualified person. 
um, who's, been, who's been working in the industry for you, yeah. you, you, you're so busy, you, you don't have time to recruit, to, to yeah. interview lots and lots of people. Yeah. So you try and you try and say, well, I'll, 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 I'll narrow it down using my, my the CV and find the people that have got the, the highest yeah. skills. Been there, done it. Yeah. The people with the highest skills are not necessarily the right, right piece of people for your business. Yeah. You've got to kiss a lot of frogs before you meet your handsome prince or, <laughs> or princess. What you have, yeah. what needs to be done is you need to have a, a broader look at the at the person don't trust the the highest skills as long yeah. as you, you need to understand the job yeah. you want to recruit people interview people that you believe looking at the at the cv have got some skills able to do that job uh, think about um where the lo lo location is are they able to, to how easy or difficult is it for them to come yeah. how um where, where how what does this you, you you can see how the the job might how they have the skills to fill the need of the business yeah. what does the business give to like fill that. the needs of the individual? Because right. it isn't just necessarily about about money. Somebody might take a, a minimum wage because it's it's so close to where to where, where they live. Yeah. Uh, the hours are are nice and fixed, yeah. and they're still able to do a part time job in the in the bar. Right. Um, so so, so they're quite happy because it fits their lifestyle. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So all right then. So. We, in other videos, we've been talking about things like um, contracts and all the rest of it. Would you say that um, if I'm recruiting someone, having you know a formal contract that I can present to them and go through all those various steps to make them feel like a, a, they are becoming part of the team, is it good to have procedures like that in place so that rather than just saying, yes, you've got the job, and then before they know it, they've been working there three months and they can't even remember when they started, is it better to have some kind of formal steps that they go through? Uh, you're talking about induction, are you? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, it is. And as, as I'm saying, yes, I can, I can, I can see people. If anybody were listening to us, um, yeah. I can see people turning off, going, "Oh, good heavens, we're a small business." Yeah. She's telling me I've got to interview hundreds of hundreds of people. I don't yeah. have the time. I don't have the time to do the, yeah. the induction. And I totally understand that. But what I'm what I'm suggesting is that it's like anything in your business, yeah. you plan it. Yeah. So you need. It, and it's such a huge investment. The, the it's the biggest investment you make in your in your business is is the people. So you do need to spend some time planning, and it's perhaps you need some some support with uh, being able to get the right the right people. But it it bears dividends up up front. So um, yeah, you, for one for one vacancy, I would recommend that you need to interview at least ten people. Right. Now you may not be able to to have the time to do that, but somebody needs to be doing that 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 for you, and that's possibly where people like ourselves will come into. To right, help. I was just going to ask you that because, as you mentioned that, so do companies like yourselves? Do you actually do the interview? Because I'd be less emotional because you're going to be less emotional than me because you're going to be looking at the person and measuring the whole thing. Whereas I'm going to be there mm -hmm. and already thinking to myself, do I like them? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm going to be the person working with them. So. Um, small business like myself, we c you would actually you could provide a service where you start the, you know, I still want the final decision, mm. but you could start the the uh, interviewing processes for us. Yeah, the key is to understand your understand your business yeah. because it is a huge decision, and you're you're giving that responsibility over to somebody else. So yeah. you've got we, you've got to trust the person that when they're shortlisting, yeah. that they're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. So yes, we need to. We have a lot of experience in working with, with small business, but the key is to understand what what drives your business. Understand. You talked before about tests and things like yes. that. It's understanding the the teamwork. Yeah. Um, the the culture of the business starts with the person at the at the top. Oh. Um, but if we had everybody look reflecting yeah. the same personality as the person at the top, the business isn't going to work no. because um, we've all got strengths and weaknesses, right. and you need to have a, a, a good balance. Yeah. Um, and there's, and there's working within cultures. So you know, with with, S, with SMEs, I I, I spend a, a lot of time doing um, recruitment for, for 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 SMEs where they were where they were setting up and trying to find people from large organisations yeah. that perhaps take a redundancy package that w that might want to work with with an SME well that's that's quite a challenge because working in an SME is very very different yeah, to working right. in a larger Absolutely. large organization so they're quite unusual the the, the people see. Yeah. so it it's, it's very important to to have to have the time to have the open-mindedness to to look beneath the surface of the CV but look beneath the surface of somebody who gives you an excellent interview and an excellent yeah. CV you want somebody that's that's going to Contribute to your business and get something from working in your business. That's right. 
and and you you know we were talking before as well we were saying you know when, when you got this ha this retention problem you got the high turnover there was a cost involved mm -hmm. so probably the cheapest solution was to get a professional company involved and uh, come up with come up go through a proper interview procedure so you get the right person the first time mm -hmm. i know there's always going to be circumstance when that person may or may not mm -hmm. fit but at least you've got a better chance if you did your homework mm -hmm. up front and or it could be that you know recruitment is a very expensive uh, yeah. process um, and using external people is expensive, so it could be that you do your own recruitment, yeah. but you you need help as to how to plan and manage it, um, yeah. and what, as you said, what to look for. And yeah. I avoided your question because you, you, yeah. I think you asked me what what was yeah. the key things, and it's different for each job. So it's, yeah. it's understanding what the uh, what the what the job because it's it's, it's that what. what what does the what does the business look for from this person, yeah. and vice versa? What can the person get from the from the bit from the business? And once yeah. you if you can match that, yeah. then you then then you're onto a winner. But you've also got to look for the future. That's fine for now, but yeah. what's happening in the uh, in the future? Right. I mean, I've come across some organisations where they they don't ask people what the what the previous salary was. It's insanity yeah. Yeah. because that gives you a huge piece of information to know. Well, ooh. This job is five thousand pounds less than your last the last salary. How does that work? Now you need to listen to their explanation. They may well have an explanation if that's acceptable, yeah. or you know I've, I've worked yeah. this a part time job and you've just been made redundant from a full time job. Oh yes, I really yeah. want it. I really want it. I really want it. And then don't be surprised three months later when they go and leave and get take a full time job. Go full -time <laughs> job so it's obviously a very complex <laughs> subject. <laughs> so guys, this has been Steve Brown from Swansea Creators. We've been talking this morning to Heather from HCHR. Uh, we've been talking about recruitment and retaining staff. It's a complex subject, but if you want to know more, you can look at the website and we'll see you on the next video.